Hello and welcome to this lesson on the tune Minuet in G by Bach. Um, <clears throat> I say Minuet in G, it's actually going to be Minuet in C because we're going to do it on this C, G Anglo concertina. If you want it to be in the key of G major, you're going to need to play the same tune but on a G, D Anglo concertina. Just to be clear about that, this row on this concertina is the C major row, okay, and this row nearest to me is the G major row and the row furthest from me is the accidental row. So we are playing it in the key of C major just to be clear. So we're in the key of C major our time signature is 3-4 so we're counting in threes. There aren't any chords in this as such because it's a classical piece. Uh, sometimes uh, the left hand can be expressed all on the treble clef sometimes we need to go low enough to use the bass clef and I would point you to the document that I would have sent you uh, where I go through how to use the bass clef with the CG Anglo concertina. You could play this tune going backwards and forwards from side to side in a fairly smooth legato style, but I personally think that's confusing and kind of missing the point of this instrument where you get a lot of the notes just by pushing the bellows in and out. So I've gone for that, that style more than the legato side to side style. If you look at the music, you'll see those dagger symbols, uh, which indicate those notes can be played just by reversing the bellows direction. You don't have to repress the button, but I'll, I'll highlight that when we get to it. So in other words, the bulk of the melody will be played on the right hand side uh, and the accompaniment on the left. Now, weirdly enough, I usually have my left side of my concertina on my uh, right leg so I support the left end and have the right hand floating free. But with this one, this tune, I tend to do it the other way around. So the right side is supported and the left is free. Uh, you'll have to experiment with that to see what's good for you. Uh, bring the bellows out a fair way before you start. Uh, and you've got this first bar. Now bars of three, four never make sense on their own, but we'll, we'll link that to bar two in a moment. This first bar is a complete bar, not a pickup bar, so it's got the full three beats. Uh, the counting is one, two, and three, and. That's crotchet, two quavers, two quavers. Look at the notes of the stems going up, that's the tune, and the notes of the stems coming down, that's your accompaniment. So the tune is. So you've got G, C, D, E, F. Now when you go in and out with the bellows, and you can see the direction in the middle of the stay there between the treble and the bass clef. Um, don't yank them, it's just a tiny movement, that's all you need. Like that, see? So finger three on the G, finger one on the C, both on the push. Uh, D, finger two, pull. E, uh, finger two, same button, push, and come back to the uh, eighth button on the C row. That'll give you the note F on the pull. So you've got the left hand that you're going to do there. You're going to have middle C, which is the third uh, button up on the C row. Finger three, and that's on beat one. You're going to go one, two, and three, and. Now on beat three, you're going to play another note on the left hand side, which is D. You'll notice it's got a diamond head, so that means it's on the G row. And it's actually button two of the G row, little finger. I've written it as a quaver because you've got to lose the note before you play that final F on the right hand side. Otherwise you'll get this. Which you obviously don't want. So make sure you lift off as soon as you've played that uh, note of D um, on the G row there. Like that, okay? 